Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 9. This lecture, we will cover monitoring for ML systems. Just like in any production system, machine learning models need to be observed in order to make sure they perform as expected. Monitoring helps us to identify issues like data drift, model degradation, or operational failures, even before they impact the user. So it's a critical part of maintaining trust and reliability in real-world ML applications. So far, we walked through the key components of classical machine learning pipeline, starting with the pre-processing, followed by training, and finally model deployment, using delta tables and MLflow. In the previous lectures, we also learned how to deploy workflows using data asset bundles, which help package the code and configuration in a structured way. In the last lecture, we covered CI-CD pipelines, including how to automate deployments and manage environments along with authentication using service principles for secure and production-grade access. Now we have come to the last piece, monitoring. Let's start with talking about what things to monitor in ML system. First, the generic monitoring. These are the standard checks you would have in any production system. System health. Are all services up and running? Are there any signs of CPU or memory pressure? Errors. Are we seeing spikes in exceptions? Failed API calls or timeouts? And latency. How quickly is the system responding? For real-time systems, even small increases in latency can degrade user experience or downstream processing. And then we have ML-specific monitoring. This is where things get a bit more nuanced. First, we have take data quality checks. Are we receiving data in the format we expect? Are there missing values, unexpected ranges, or broken pipelines? Data drift, which refers to the changes in the distribution of incoming data over time. While it's often discussed, it's also a bit questionable. Not every drift is harmful, so we need to ask, is this drift meaningful or is this just a noise? And then there is model drift. Unlike data drift, this is about the performance of the model itself degrading over time. Maybe it no longer predicts accurately due to the underlying changes in real world. And then we have cost and business value related metrics. Even if your system is technically working, it is important to ask, is it worth it? Are we optimizing our resources use, usage? Are we paying for GPUs for 24-7 for a model that only runs once a day? Are we moving the needle on key outcomes? Higher conversion, lower churn, faster fraud detection, whatever your goal is. And KPIs, these vary depending on the use case, but they are ultimate performance signals. And finally, we have fairness and bias related metrics, especially important in sensitive use cases like fraud detection or loan approvals. You may need to monitor and mitigate bias behavior to ensure compliance and ethical usage. In traditional software systems, if you keep everything the same, the code, the model, environment, infrastructure, you can expect exactly the same behavior every time. It is predictable and deterministic. But in machine learning systems, it's different. Even if all those components remain unchanged, your model's performance can degrade and behave differently. Why? Because ML systems are heavily influenced by statistical properties of data flowing through them. So if the user behavior shifts, or there are seasonality changes, or if upstream data pipelines start emitting slightly different distributions, your model might start underperforming. This is why MLOps introduces new challenges that don't exist in traditional DevOps. We are not just monitoring the system components, we are also monitoring data drift, model drift, and the health of statistical assumptions. Let's remember data drift. Data drift happens when the distribution of the input data shifts over time, even if the relationship between inputs and outputs stays the same. Take the housing price prediction example. Suppose a lot of new houses enter the market in a certain district. People's preferences haven't changed, and the relationship between features and the price remains stable. But because the model hasn't seen enough examples of new houses, its performance drops, not because the logic changed, but because the data shifted. So in this case, data drift is the root cause of decline in accuracy. And it might also signal model, model drift, which means the model no longer generalizes well to the current data. Let's move on to model drift, which is also known as concept drift. 
It occurs when the relationship between input features and the target variable changes over time. In other words, the model's original assumptions about how inputs relate to the outputs no longer hold. Let's go back to our housing prices example. Suppose new houses enter the market and the government introduces a subsidy for families with children. As a result, larger houses start selling for lower prices. This is a shift in the underlying relationship between features like house size and the final price. Even if the input data distribution doesn't change much, the model's predictions will become less accurate because the rules it learned no longer reflects the reality. Here's a great example that shows why we shouldn't panic just because data drift is detected. Let's look at the left-hand side first, the temperature distribution over time. The blue violins represent the reference period, when we trained or tested the model. The red violence shows the, per the periods where data drift was detected using statistical method, in this case, Jensen-Shannon distance. So yes, statistically speaking, the distribution of the input feature temperature has shifted significantly. But does that mean the model is failing? Now look at the right-hand side. This is the model's realized performance, measuring use measured using mean absolute error. The vertical gray line separates the test and production periods. The red dashed line is performance degradation threshold. Even though the model sees drift in its inputs, the blue line representing mean absolute error never crosses the threshold, so the model is still performing well even under changed data distribution. So take away. Not all data drifts is harmful. Sometimes drift is just noise or the model is robust, robust enough to handle it. That is why in MLOps it's important to track both data and performance before taking action. This example is taken from a nice article from LaniML. I highly recommend you to check it out. Now we're moving on to lake house monitoring. Databricks offers Lakehouse Monitoring, which is a powerful tool that helps you track the quality and statistical properties of your data and monitor the performance of machine learning models, all from within Databricks ecosystem. Depending on the scenario type, whether it's inference, time series, or snapshot based, Databricks automatically generates a few key components to help you track model and data health. Profile metrics table, which captures basic statistics like averages, null rates, cardinality across your features. Drift metrics table, which calculates how much the current data deviates from the expected or reference distribution. And the pre-built dashboard, so you can visualize all this in real time without having to create complex queries from scratch. Now for inference and time series scenarios, which are both time aware, Databricks slices the data into monitoring windows. You can pick options from like 5 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, 1 day, or even 1 year. This gives you the flexibility to, det to detect both short-term anomalies and long-term drifts, whether you are monitoring a high-frequency model in production or a slower-moving slower business process. The purpose of Profile Metrics table is to store summary statistics for each column in each time window, including slices or groupings. You would find some computed statistics like count, null, distinct count, mean, frequent items. And for inference log, it also includes accuracy, confusion metrics, precision, recall, etc. And the purpose of Drift Metrics table is to track how columns distributions change over time using drift detection techniques. There are two types of drift, consecutive, which compares the current window to the previous one, and a baseline, which compares the current data to a reference baseline table. And you would see some computed drift metrics, statistical tests, distance metrics, and deltas. Here is a nice table that lists the methods and different data types. Some methods work for both continuous and categorical data, like Jensen, Shannon, and Hellinger. And some methods work for only continuous features, like Wasserstein and kolmogorov smirnov And Chi-square and Alfinity are only suited for categorical data. For detailed information of each metric, you can check out these links. We're moving on to inference tables. 
Inference tables are built-in feature to log model input and prediction from a serving endpoint directly into a delta table in Unity Catalog. This provides a simple way to monitor, debug and optimize these models in production. Once enabled, they automatically capture request and response payloads, as well as metadata like response time and status codes. Enabling them is very easy. You would need to check enable inference table box when editing a serving endpoint. We did this in lecture six. But remember, the workspace must have Unity Catalog enabled, and you would need the right permissions to create and manage the associated Delta table. It's important to note that inference tables alone cannot be used directly for monitoring. They simply log raw inputs and predictions from the serving endpoint. To enable actual monitoring, such as tracking drift or performance, you need to process this data into a structured format known as inference profile table. An inference profile table would typically include a timestamp for when the request was made, the input features, the model's prediction, and optionally, the ground truth label for comparison. Once this table is created, you can use tools like Lakehouse Monitoring to generate dashboards, track model quality metrics, and detect issues over time. Ideally, you should set up an automated job that processes the raw inference table into a structured monitoring table. This monitoring table would be used to update, gen update or generate a metrics table and automatically update the dashboard. You can also configure alerts so you are notified when performance drops or data shifts, helping you take quick actions like retraining or redeploying the model. And this is an example for real-time inference. Here, the model is retrained weekly and the updated model is deployed to the serving endpoint. Separately, when ground truth labels arrive, a workflow updates the monitoring table used by Lakehouse Monitoring. These are two distinct workflows, one for training and deployment, another one for monitoring, each running on a different schedule. This separation allows for modularity and scalability, especially in production environments. Which brings us to the end of this lecture. We have covered quite some theory for monitoring and inference tables. Next lecture, we will see an example of creating monitoring table based on inference logs. See you there.